What's up, everybody? I am back. I didn't really go anywhere. I just haven't had a whole lot to say in the last two weeks. I've uh, been out shooting a fair bit, um, but mostly kind of shooting for myself. I haven't uh, kind of feel like I kind of came to the end of my testing on the camera. So um, moving forward, I'll be more showing projects, um, kind of things like the Hummingbird and Green Heron documentary I did. Um, we're going to do more more stuff like that. But um, if I get out and do a cool shoot of something that I think has value, then I will, uh, I'll bring that back. So we're filming this today on the X-H2S using the Viltrox 13 millimeter 1.4. I'm shooting it in crop mode. So it's giving me about an 18 millimeter APS-C, uh, field of view, which I guess is 27 mil, uh, full frame. And I am shooting in, uh, a film sim today. I think either standard or Provia, uh, I'll look it up maybe and put it on the screen here. Um, yeah, F log is just, I, I mean, I haven't put in the time to really learn how to properly grade F log. And one of the big draws of Fuji is, is the colors kind of pop. So these colors look a little, <laughs> little intense, a lot of orange and, uh, afternoon glow in here, but we'll see. Um, so what it's been, uh, three months basically since I've had the camera today, we're going to be talking about shooting, uh, birds. Uh, specifically big raptors close. Uh, these were um, captive bred birds at a, uh, a falconry display that I shot this past weekend. It was pretty cool. Got some different looks. Uh, very different experience from shooting wild birds, which I much prefer wild birds. Um, very rarely are you going to get this close to uh, to birds in the wild, so getting these kind of detailed shots are, are very difficult to do. So it's nice to do, but of course, you know, there's not much of an experience here. These are just birds on someone's hand 10 feet away. So um, I kind of liken when you're shooting like this, it's almost like shooting like a, a fashion shoot or something, or uh, I've done a bit of band photography. Uh, obviously, the birds don't listen. You can't pose them, but um, you're not struggling with trying to find your subject. You're not struggling with, you know, typically exposure and sharpness. I mean, all those things are kind of a given because you're in a relatively controlled environment but you are trying to get the right angles and the right poses and expressions i, sh I shot a lot um and uh today i want to kind of show you what the camera can do some examples but i also want to show you um what separates good and bad bird photography because i think a lot of people shoot um in the examples I'm going to show of what doesn't work. Uh, and I looked like a crazy person for some of this. I showed up and there were five or six people with cameras, um, you know, a bunch of people kind of just sitting on the bleachers, definitely taking photos that looked like my, like, don't shoot example. Um, I ended up kind of laying on the ground. I was moving around, uh, getting different angles a lot of times. It worked for a few birds. It didn't work for a few others. So, um, yeah, we'll go through that. But in general, how do I feel about the X-H2S and the 150 to 600? It's really good. Um, you know, one word, one sentence review. If you can't take good photos with this camera, just, you got to go back to photo school because I mean, it's really, really good. Um, are there a few things they could tweak? Sure. Um, I can't believe we're three months in they still haven't added uh, a dial for exposure compensation or ISO makes me wonder if that's actually not coming, but I've gotten used to shooting without it. I, I have ISO set to a couple of, uh, custom buttons as I've made previous videos about and it's not the end of the world. So although I do wish they would update it. Um, I'm still taking heat every day on uh, my last video about the X-H2, and I do not have one yet. I am expecting to get a review copy, but probably not in the near future. Uh, I've been told that that can be accommodated, but there is a bit of a wait list. The camera's not even out yet. I don't, uh, whatever. Uh, the camera's brand new, so I was pretty late to request one, so I'm not, not going to be new to the heap, but I bought the X-H2S and the 150 to 600 with my own money, had it on day one, um, and I've been using it a lot. So, you know, I feel like when it comes to wildlife shooters in the world shooting this camera, I am, I'm a day one -er, and I think I have the experience to talk about this. So again, for anybody who's, uh, probably not watching this, if you like rage hated me so much on the last video, I think people missed my point. I did not say the X-H2 cannot shoot wildlife. I said the X-H2S does it way better. Uh, I still believe that. I will die on that hill. There's a lot of shots even recently that I think the X-H2 would have struggled with. I have not taken a shot yet that I think the X-H2 would have done a significantly better job. Even some of these shots today, um, some of these really close, tight portraits, I mean, if there was ever a condition where the X-H2 would have helped, I guess it's here, um, you know, controlled subject, not moving, stationary, uh, you're not worried about slow readout speed for rolling shutter, and maybe you can make use of those megapixels, but as you'll see, 
in those situations, the XH2S looks awesome. So why would you need more than that? Whereas, uh, if, if you like video at all, the XH2S still kills the XH2. Um, and, and again, things like the rolling shutter, um, you know, readout speed, things like that. When I say speed, I'm not just talking about 15 frames per second versus 40. I'm talking about a camera that is just punchy, faster autofocus, faster everything. Um, you know, if you're watching my channel, I presume that you're interested in opinions about wildlife. If you shoot wildlife, don't buy the X-H2. If you're looking at it, buy the S. It's just way better for that, that use. Um, if you can't afford the S, then don't spend 500 bucks less and get the X-H2. Buy something cheaper. Go buy like a Canon R10. I actually finally shot the R10 in the field last week. I'll probably do a video about it. Um, it's great. I mean, it, yes, it's not the X-H2S. It lags in many, many categories in terms of ergonomics and different features. But if you're talking pure, basic, autofocus shooting animals, um, it probably does about as good a job as the X-H2S. I mean, it, not pushed to the limit, uh, but I don't think the X-H2 is going to dramatically outperform the R10 for twice the price. Uh, for wildlife. I'm not talking portraits and stuff like that. So with that asterisk out of the way, let's review this Ferrari of a camera and let's show you first what not to do. Uh, so we had five birds and our first one that came out was uh, this Harris Hawk. And as you can see, I'm sitting on the bleachers here. Um, and a little note about my uh, uh, some of my settings. I'm not sure what my exposure compensation was doing although it didn't really matter here, but I, I tweaked it around. I was not at full extension because the bird was so close. Uh, I was at 3,200 because I thought we were going to be flying these birds a lot, and in reality, they just kind of popped from perch to perch. So if you're wondering, you know, why was I shooting such a high shutter speed uh, and pushing my ISO, that's why. You can see ISO 3,200 on these cameras does not look great. Um, although I don't hate the Fuji noise pattern, so I, I don't think it's the end of the world. Um you know, it, it, it does denoise a little weird just to show you, depending on the picture, um, sometimes it works well, sometimes it's, it's a little strange, but if you see like it's here, it's gotten rid of the noise well. Um, if it's higher, sometimes it'll end up kind of splotchy. I didn't have a lot of contrast on the bird in the first place, so the detail wasn't fantastic. Um, but it gives you kind of an idea of what we're looking at settings wise so i want to show you some do's and don'ts so the first problem that you have when shooting captive birds especially at a show like this if you're at a, if you're doing a photography event which i haven't done um it's a lot easier because they're typically going to perch the bird on a place that's easier to shoot or uh, when they fly they're going to give you longer more predictable flights they're going to tell you when they're going to fly often um so here there's a lot going on this is a county fair you had different um demonstrations or trying to be careful with the birds uh, these are all captive bred birds for movie tv and uh, different kind of types of pest control for for birds um, so you know say what you will i'm i'm comfortable with the ethics here these aren't wild caught stolen birds um, you know they were they were raised and bred to be working that you could talk about that another day but anyway um if you're going to shoot these birds i think you know your challenge is not in finding the animal your challenge is in getting good looks um, at the photography sessions, it's going to be a little bit easier, but if you go to a fair or I think all of these tips apply to a zoo, you're ideally trying to, you know, you're not trying to trick the viewer. I always uh, disclose if I shot a captive bird versus wild. Um, but you don't want, you don't want your eye to immediately tell you, oh, that's at the zoo. That's a gorilla at the zoo. You know, you, I think you're still looking for a nice clean photograph and then in your caption or whatever, you can disclose what happened. So here's your first problem. You know, we're getting, if I was this close to a wild Harris Hawk, um, I would frame this and I'd be happy with it, but sitting on the bleachers, as you can see, um, this is where, where, uh, she flew. And I think I was using the, uh, pre-capture, which works pretty well. I was waiting for her to fly. Um, but like, I mean, these are not good shots. And I think if you're watching my channel and you're new to photography, I'm, I'm hoping to help, uh, you with your skills. I am by no means the best photographer in the world. Although if you're going to chirp and tell me how little I know, I encourage you to leave your Flickr link so we can uh, put our money where our mouths are. Um, uh, cause get a lot of, a lot of, uh, talking on YouTube without examples. Um, but these are the kind of shots that I see a lot. I see these on Facebook. I see, you know, all the, like I said, there were a bunch of photographers when I showed up, um, 
just kind of sitting there with their cameras on their laps and they were all sitting in a row and I know all their photos would look like this, assuming they're sharp. Like, I mean, these, uh, you know, yeah, if, if the bird was composed in the middle of the frame would be better than the side with a clipped wing. Um, but ultimately these are, you know, these are not good shots because their backgrounds are a mess. So I just had a few I wanted to show you. Um, in terms of the autofocus, really good. Camera missed a couple of times on a few shots, but for the most part, no complaints. Harris hawks are weird. I've I've been close to a couple of captive Harris hawks, and they're cool. I don't I don't know what it is about them. I, it's maybe I don't know. There's something about them that just doesn't do it for me. But you can see here, uh, this is where like having the 20 frames per second is nice. These are sharper than they look. It's just not loading the frame. I think we we lost them a little bit here. And I would have had some video of some of this play before uh, we got rolling. So you'd see there was a video and somewhere around here, it starts to kind of lose them. But you can change that again on settings. You can work with that. I mean, this isn't my bag. I'm, I don't really, again, this could be the sharpest picture in the world. And like some of these are really really sharp when you let them load that one's not so much um but a lot of these <clears throat> in different sequences that i went through were <clears throat> excuse me looking really good even if it's not not these ones uh, but they're garbage photos either way it doesn't matter how sharp they are sharpness doesn't make a good picture um so i want I'm, there are good ones i want to get to the good ones so uh here you can see i started trying to work angles i was trying to shoot the bird uh between these concrete blocks but i couldn't quite get it he was facing the wrong way couldn't get a good pose had a bit of meat on the beak i was starting to get a bit of detail out of him but still had like some some flight settings i wasn't sure what was going to fly um here we've got our membrane kind of cool again uh I wasn't getting the quality I wanted here. Um, I never really got anything I was super happy with with the Harris Hawk. Uh, then we moved to the Red Tail. Oh, spoiler. We moved to the Red Tail, uh, and these are one of my favorite birds. Um, very native to most places, I guess, in North America. But I actually flushed a big one on the side of the road just before uh, we got to the fair. And, and they're a bird I always, every Red Tail Hawk I ever see, I notice and I, I like. They're very skittish and hard to shoot. So getting detailed portraits, I've only I've only spent time in two and a half years. I've only been two instances where I've been close to wild red tails that didn't immediately run away. Um, so you can see again, same problem. Like I'm trying to frame where I can get a shot, but here's one. We'll just let it load. Uh, this is one where he posed against the sky, and I said, okay. Well, I I personally really like bright, clean backgrounds. Um, I've processed this. I've denoised it. Um, sorry, let me just let my computer catch up. So I've denoised it and sharpened, but like, here's where you can start to get the detail. Um, and again, like you can see it's a little mushy in some of these feathers. That's more of a contrast issue. Like you can see it's clearly sharp. Like we focused, especially like right around the eye. Um, but you're just not getting a lot of contrast in those feathers. So you're going to lose some of the details. I like white backgrounds. So this is by far not my favorite shot. Uh, there was this light. I was trying to do some weird stuff there but that was not quite executing properly but you can see here is where i start moving this is indicative of what you're going to be shooting you know you've got a bird on a hand being shown to people um, and the bird is is frequently like in between spectators and the handler um, so you're trying to position and get a, a clear shot but we we got some stuff um spoiler we there's our owl um i think that's most of our bad shots okay so at this point she had brought out uh she brought out a screech owl that i completely missed but we went through uh two photo sessions uh so i came back and the second time i got the screech but here's where i started to get some more work in so our uh yeah this one's these this is unedited this is just the straight raw from the camera so we started to get some poses um a little tighter on the ear here than i wanted uh, but i start i was finding some background and I think this is too where the frames per second of the camera helped because I was shooting typically just 15 frames per second, um, but I, I was rattling off more than I normally would. Um, in hindsight, I should have known they weren't going to fly the owl, so I should have backed off on my settings, but I was feeling okay with what I was getting anyway. Um, let's see here. So we're getting some poses. These are, this is still the raw. I'm just looking to see where the edit is. 
Uh, these ones are where I'm starting to, to have more fun with it. So you're getting her eyes closed, uh, or his, actually, sorry, his eyes. This is a boy, I believe. Um, you're getting uh, the membrane there. So the membranes were a lot of fun. You can still see the noise. Like, I mean, it, it depends. If you don't zoom in, the noise doesn't really bother me here. Um, you know, I think that's really to taste. Actually, so this one I did edit, although it was showing you without the noise. Um, so here you can see again, like there's, there's your feather detail. So if you're wondering, like, is this lens camera combo sharp? Um, very, yes, very sharp. If you shoot it properly again, this is sharpened in post, but you have to feed it something, uh, good in the first place to get there. So this is kind of neat. Um, this is an example again, like this is what I was working with, right? So she's got the bird on her arm and then she turns and there's a hand in the way and it's, it's a lot to deal with. Um, although I kind of like this shot still, um, just to, uh, to kind of show what was going on. Uh, this is one of my favorites. So this is, uh, we're getting moodier with the colors. A um, little bit darker here. This one, I um, probably won't do anything with this. Like, I mean, this was zoomed in tighter um, on purpose, but in hindsight, maybe too far. But it is nice to see that detail. If we come here for a second and we, let's just bring up. So this is completely unsharpened. Um, it's pretty good. And then show you if you throw some sharpening on that, you can see there. So here is with the sharpening. That's just normal screen sharpening. There's a that. So that really pops. And I think this is my thing too. A lot of like gear snobs message me and, and ultimately um, I'm a, I'm a final, final results guy. I really don't care what went into getting it in terms of your gear. If, if you can use an F8 lens for a thousand bucks and then a couple program clicks to get here with AI sharpening, I don't care if a lens can render this sharp without doing it. Um, you know, if you're not editing your wildlife photography, then you're leaving a lot on the table. Uh, this would be an interesting shot. Like I, I'd have to find like, where is my crop? But, but this would be something to like really highlight the details with. I would probably want to get rid of all the green. I mean, I don't, I don't like, that's not a good crop, but, but it is nice. Like seeing just like all those tiny little feathers pop right up close. So it's kind of neat. Let's move on. I'm going to keep this. What are we at? Oh boy. None of these videos are short, but a couple more. We're going to try to wrap this up in the next two or three minutes. So this is probably one of my favorites here. This is where you start getting into to the magic. I think you're getting head on. You're getting direct eye contact. Again, you've sharpened things. And and as you saw that last picture with the hand, I mean, this was this this was ten seconds later. So I was just moving around, uh, and this is where the Fuji X-H2S helps a lot because the autofocus is so fast that I trust it to just lock on and like, bam, just get the bird right away. And that's how you get a moment like that. Um, you know, you're, you're blasting here, getting like some weird membrane stuff. Uh, here's a tight edit I did to show some feather face detail. And uh, we're gonna move on to our last two subjects. So here's the bald eagle. I really wanted this to work. I should have worked harder for this uh, because these were the some other bleachers behind them. And I think the orange is really cool, but I it didn't occur to me in the field and I didn't get a good good uh pose and you can see like the oranges just wash out here so even though i've got his face didn't work now i got a lot of tight shots of his face um very cool to see a mature bald eagle this close or i spent a lot of time with bald eagles in the field in the kayak and most eagles i've run across are super skittish uh even if they're nesting um you know, it's like usually they're going to be up high or back and forth. So um, now this is a shot about an, to show you an edit. Um, I've I've got an edit of this. I cropped in and then um, clone stamped out our handler here. Uh, it gives you an idea. Actually, I missed it a little bit right here. But if you, you look, you can take that. I can get away with the crop because, again, yeah, I don't need the X-H2 for that. I still have plenty of detail left. Uh, give me... Sorry, my computer can't handle these. I have lots of detail in there. Um, so, you know, you crop in a little, you get rid of what you don't want, and then repose it, and that works out. Uh, this was not cropped. This is how close I was to him. So, again, a couple edits just to you see, but you can see, like, the feather detail popping. It's hard to get the – there was harsh light right now, so the white – it's hard to really – 
get more detail than these big ones but to get these kind of like micro feathers got a little bit in there um, similar you know again like here you're separating if you go in you take a picture like this and then you crop and you can kind of go like this so you know would the xh2 help here for cropping yeah i guess it would be fine um the hair here would be a little tricky but i could get rid of that if i needed to but i mean i have enough detail here that like i mean you can see it here like by the time i clean all this up this looks fine and that's again zooming in at 100 percent. so and you don't even need to crop that that far so this one was either a crop i don't think i edited this so actually and i like the tones up here so i was trying to get like direct eye contact um which was cool here like this is an example of one i don't think you could save you're not going to go in and cut that out it would look really bad so you're trying to separate the bird from the person um same as here this is like a little much going on you could you could work with this in a pinch but in a situation like this where you have a lot of do-overs you're going to try to do better like here's natural separation looks a lot better eagle looks great super boring but if you're just trying to get like a nice sharp picture of the the birds you can get that um a couple more uh this is like garishly bright on this edit i don't know what i was doing here but this is kind of cool I, I did like the hawk leaving the hand so this was probably the only harris hawk shot that i thought was okay i'd have to play with this edit i don't know my greens got a little under uh, out of control um and then the screech same thing i, I kind of like uh this is the second uh afternoon show and i kind of like the uh this leather leather glove here i think the bird looks cool like it's it's a nice looking glove um but again, like I tried to get uh, some shots against the trees, really nice, like just the the sun. And these are this was taken at one o'clock in the afternoon. So this is like really harsh light, and you can still work with it. Grumpy little owl. Let's see, eyes closed again. Just repositioning. You can see like sitting right on the hand. Uh, this one was tricky because like um, no eye contact. I don't think I ever got like direct eye contact. But there's shots in there that I like. I've never actually seen a screech owl in the wild. I've I've got a uh, my friend uh, Trader with a cannon. Used to be due to the Fuji. Um, he's he's given me several locations where he knows there's owls, and they've never been there when I'm there. Here's another example of the red hill hawk. This is the kind of shot you don't want, right? Obviously, this is this is garbage. You've got busy background and stuff. And then they brought the hawk out one last time and again we got some direct eye contact i haven't really edited any of these i was really stoked on these shots and then i realized that i had a better shot and where is it uh -uh -uh. okay hold on i don't think i Where is the shot that I liked? Okay, we're gonna edit this out. Where is this good shot? Where we go? this one okay we're back here's my favorite shot um that i took of the day uh so this is the bald eagle this is giving me head on look and i've got membranes on both eyes so i'm pretty amped on this shot uh this is not a shot i would expect to get in the wild and again by by separating i'm getting tons of detail i'm getting a really menacing look and as you can see, I mean, I took a couple hundred shots of this eagle. They're all, you know, mo almost all of them detailed, sharp, close. Um, but I think this is a really cool moment. Um, I think I probably cropped in. I could, I could space this out a bit, but I, I really wanted to draw. I wouldn't mind a bit more space here bet beside uh, the bottom of the white. But I really wanted to draw the attention in right on the eyes and the stare. So I think that's pretty cool. And that's what I was, what I was looking for. So um i think yeah you know take those lessons next time you go to the zoo um or you go to like a fair with events or something like that whether you're shooting a horse or a cow in a field just think about your background and like what you're trying to accomplish if you want detail um 
you know, just go for it. Like even here, I checked, I thought, I'm like, am I smudging this with sharpening? And I really wasn't. It's just the way the light was hitting his face um, and the way those black details work. And then the membrane on the eye, um, you know, it makes it look kind of hazy and unsoft. But but there is a lot going on there, which, which just worked out. So... I think that's it. I uh, did some video tests today. My wife uh, horse riding. So um, those will be cool. And then, uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. But uh, the camera works really great. Um, and as you can see here, Flickr link I'll have below. Um, I have an on one affiliate link below if you're looking for a new editing kit. And um, you can't go wrong with this setup. It's, it's just really great. So hope you liked. Thanks for watching.